Mr. Naharin Ohad. Again, welcome to Stockholm and to CF Hill, where we are surrounded uh, by Batsheva Dance Company, the stunning photos of Gadi Dagon. And uh, uh, immediately you get a certain feeling hearing the word Batsheva Dance Company. And what would be more exciting than to hear from one, like no other personified the company? How would you describe Batsheva Dance Company in the few words in, in a condensed way? What kind of animal is it? I didn't found the company, you know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know. No, because maybe I miss I misheard. Uh, good evening. It's nice that you ask what kind of animal it is, because it's nice to remember that we are animals, especially when we dance. Um, because uh, when we connect to the animal we are, we connect to our instincts and we also don't care about how we look. I don't think animal cares about how they look. And the dancers that move for the pleasure of it, for the passion of it, for the task of it, but not for the beauty of it, is actually a lot more beautiful than those who look at the mirror and care about how they look. An animal is really connected to the efficiency of movement. Animal move is a task. Animal has uh, speed and explosive power. Uh, all things that are very important for dancing. What is the question? Uh, uh, the question, what, white, what kind of animal is Batsheva Dance Company? And the answer was an animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even shorter. Your dancing style well, has been... Well, you know, yeah? a hum human animal. We are animal. We don't try to be like horses or like cats. Because we are the animal. We are our own species. Yeah. yeah. Your dancing style has been described as, a fle as flexible limbs and spines, deeply grounded movement and explosive. And speaking of uh, animals, a vitality that grabs you by the collar. Do you think it can be learned or are you just born with that? I think the, the beauty of us humans, that we are born. We are born with a lot of uh, treasures. The unfortunate thing is that we can go through life while those treasures are, are locked inside us. Things that connect to our passion and to our imagination, the power of imagination, and how we utilize it uh, in our daily life, not only as dancers or artists, but as humans. Many times we remain locked. Uh, so a lot of what I try to do is I not necessary to teach people new things, but first to unlock their hidden treasures. So a lot of it we are born with. And uh, I spoke a lot about animals, but also uh, it's only part of how and why we dance. The, the pleasure of research, the idea that we can go beyond our familiar limits on a daily basis, uh, yielding delicacy, uh, the efficiency that connect to, um, you know, we, in Bacheva, uh, we don't work with mirrors. It's not allowed. We don't have mirrors on the walls. So we relate to each other. We don't see ourselves when we dance. We see our colleagues when we dance. Um, and we care about them. So that's something that a lot in the ethics of what we do. So, so it's a combination yeah. of we're born with it, mm. but we also need help to discover what it is that we're born with. Mm. And that is kind of your, has been your mission, whether it's about uh, your company, professional dancers, or if uh, it's within your invention, Gaga, it's the same kind of algorithms 
Yeah, it's a lot about uh, um, the love of discovery. Uh, it's a love of it's a love of uh, repetition. You know, we we work every day many times. It's all about repeating uh, something that we've done before, but the re we know that repetition takes us somewhere, just like stepping is repetition, but it takes us somewhere. So yeah, repetition is uh, kind of your signature, and it's very interesting also, me being an art historian, and repetition is really has an interesting um, uh, effect. we we'll talk about more about that later. You and I have talked before, over phone, uh, and uh, yeah, I was uh, kind of, uh, I was ki kind of nervous. I remember I told you, you have to understand, you're like the, the David Bowie of dance. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I made an impression, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so this conversation uh, was about the uh, participation of Gadi Dagon in the exhibition that Sandra Weil curated with great artists such as Sheila Hicks and Daniel Silver, and he was uh, par um, participating with uh, uh, photographs of s stills from uh, the performance Hora and Virus that we are surrounded. That's the green ones are Hora, and uh, the black and white uh, is Virus. And then you told me that time over phone, I asked you to, to tell me the story about how you and Gadi Dagon got to know each other. And, and it's a beautiful story. Would you tell it again in, to this audience? You remember what I told you? Yes, but not the audience. <laughs> no, no, but I'm curious what I told you. What did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to speak tonight, not me. Uh, you told me that, that, that there was a vacancy, mm. suddenly, yeah. Okay. And, and then there was this sports photographer. Yeah. yeah. No, because you, you, I got stressed because you said it was a beautiful story. Now I feel like I have to tell you a beautiful story. But it is, it was a beautiful story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, because you were kind of not so impressed, at the, I mean, not impressed by him, but that you, you said that you didn't care so much about um, the photos yes. taken. Well, it's true that um, the, the woman who was taking photos of the company in the first couple of years that uh, was with Bacheva, she uh, passed away. So we were looking for another photographer. And uh, Gadi was... Um, shooting uh, more sports, and uh, but he. And this was in 1990. 1992, that I think, something mm. like this, and he was uh, already leaning towards also uh, shooting uh, not only sports, but uh, he bec he had his studio, and uh, then he, I think, he started shooting music, rock concerts and through a rock singer that was the husband of an assistant of mine, I got to know Gadi. Uh, and that's how it started. Yes, and then it continued. Continued for mm -hmm. until he became ill with a stroke. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was curious because a dance as music is a linear uh, art uh, and it's kind of impossible to capture uh, a linear um, performance such as dance or, or sports. But still, he manages to do that, uh, to enhance and to concentrate the whole soul of a performance. And um, so... Um, uh, yeah, where were I? <laughs> yeah, do you think uh, that has something to do with him working as a sports journalist to capture not only the final, but a whole situation? I think it's, a, it's about capturing the moment uh, without actually commit a commitment to tell the whole story. It, because a moment, like now, 
it's a great story, this moment, you know. Mm. So almost didn't matter for this moment where we were an hour ago and where we're going to be an hour from now, or even two minutes from now, because this, this moment has a quality. You feel it? Absolutely. Right. And so, and also because maybe, you know, the, at the end, the reason you have a photographer is, you, is always for marketing, publicity. It's not part of what I do. But I open up my, my work to the photographer because we need it for marketing, publicity. Uh, it can become the artwork of the photographer, but for me, it's always served the purpose of my, our publicity department. Luckily, you can find someone you like to work with, but it always remained at this moment of, at this stage of the work when we need it to be a part of the marketing of the work. And this is why, for example, the reason, one of the reasons I really like this work and this work, if you see this girl, she wears socks. Yeah? Uh, this was taken when the, we were still, this was in a rehearsal. Um, Gadi was a lot with us. He came to many rehearsals, not just, it's not like he came to a fo photo shoot, he just came. And so he came to a rehearsal when dancers didn't care that some of them had their leg warmers, some of them had, so this girl had her socks on. Um, this was before the piece was premiered. Um, and he captured that moment, you know. Yeah, there's a beautiful painting in the collection of Moderna Museet uh, by the modernist painter uh, Vasily Kandinsky. And it's such a strange uh, coincidence. But his painting, it's called Green Wedge. Actually, it's called Green Wedge. And it's, it's as if he has made a painting, in, an abstract painting of this photograph. Yeah. Yes, well, yes, good. I'll show you later. So there are definitely um, similar qualities mm. to that. I have to say that this green idea wasn't mine at all. This green idea came from uh, the idea of my lighting designer, Avi Boeno Yona. After he saw the piece, he, he talked to me and said, let's, let's make it into a green space. Yeah, I asked you about that, and you were like, what do you think? And I was like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it, uh, it had to do something with, it's a green screen or something to project yeah, yeah. something. It's, it's, uh, it's the color of a green screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, unlike most choreographers, you, you, you have served in the army. You served as uh, in the entertainment troupe, because you were a good dancer. You think Pina Bausch was in the army? <laughs> you said most choreographers. Right? No, unlike most. Uh, unlike. Unlike most. You see, I don't hear well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and okay. you were you were in the Israeli army, army as a, a, a part of the entertainment troupe. Yeah. But still, um, you... You have seen death. Um, has that affected you in um, your art at all? I think my concern for my brother, who is 11 years old, younger than me, my concern and fear for him when he was in the army affected me much more than my experience in the army. Um, and, you know, people that don't go to the army in different countries, as peaceful as Sweden, will also many times face tragedies and ra harsh times. So I don't feel that my army experience um, I mean, let's say that let's say that if I have a trauma or bad memories or strong experience in, in my life, it's not my army experience. Mm. It's, uh, it's more other distant. experience, mm. or earlier ones, mm. later ones. Mm. Mm. I think it took me many years 
to analyze and digest what I saw in the army. Um, so, but there is a lot of uh, references, as I see it, to to uh, military and to army and to marching in your and and also in the movements. It's like they are marching um, in a very energetic way in almost aggressive. Yeah, but I, I don't connect it. I, I feel that the army is actually the opposite of what I want to do. And, uh, or, um, you know, the, the work is, as you say, the work is about itself. The, it, the, the work has its own universe. Um, you can, as an audience, you can connect it to your own experience. And if you connect it to the, an army experience, I cannot tell you what to connect it mm -hmm. to. But if you ask me what I'm connecting to in my work, it's not the army. Mm. Mm. And if I will connect it to the army, it will be um, as, a, as a way to laugh at myself before anything else. Uh, um, I suppose uh, many of you in here have seen the beautiful film, Mr. Gaga, and the film, uh, a sequence in the film is about something that happened in 1998, something really dramatic. Uh, the State of Israel was celebrating its 50th birthday, and you, had, you got a call from the government asking you to change clothes to the performance, they, it was too naked, it would offend the conservatives or, or uh, orthodox uh, members of the Israeli parliament. And uh, you refused and there was a scandal uh, and this was uh, news all over the world. What happened? Well, Eventually. basically it, it stemmed from the fact that in Israel there is no separation between religious and state. That was a mistake to begin with Ben Gurion, our first prime minister, that they didn't separate it. So the religious party, even though it's a small portion, because Israel government is always built with coalitions of many parties, the religious party has a lot of leverage. Um, so we were part of a performance for the 50th anniversary and because at the end, actually, it's a, it's a part of what now the Swedish ballet company is going to do. At the end of it, uh, people shed, shed off their clothes. They don't remain naked, they remain in underwear. But in the general rehearsal of this piece, I made a version for like 120 dancers on a huge stage. Uh, there were 12,000 people in the general rehearsal, and there, among them there were some religious Knesset, our government member, and he called uh, Netanyahu. Imagine Netanyahu was already our prime minister. Things and, don't uh, change. <laughs> and then I got a request to change the ending so people don't shed their clothes off because it's offensive. Um, I was always very clear that I'm not going to change it, but also we don't have to perform. You can take, at, uh, you can take, take Bacheva out of the show but I'm not going to change. But they didn't want to take it out, and it became really ridiculous. Um, at the end, when we came to the show, uh, and they still wanted us to change the club, no, 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 no. in the morning of this, I was invited to the president's house, and he came to me, and he asked, can you please change uh, <laughs> from short underwear to long underwear? It was so ridiculous. <laughs> and I was so fed up, and I said, you know what? And I'm actually the chairman of the board of my company was next to me. And uh, when we came to the president's house, I said, I told them already, I'm not going to change. And he said, of course not, and I'm supporting you 100%. When we were there in front of the president, my <laughs> chairman of the board said, you must change. <laughs> and I said, and so I, I just stood up and I said, I'm resigning. And I left. I just walked out of the president's house. And I really resigned, I basically resigned from the, my post as a director. But I did say, you can, yeah, 
change. If you're the board of director of Bacheva, you can tell them that they can change and wear their long underwear. So I left, but the dancers heard that I resigned and they refused to perform. <laughs> that's what happened. And that was actually the mistake. The mistake is that we should have performed and not changed. And let's see what happened. Mm -hmm. So even though it, it has a sort of a happy ending because people were really rooting for us and, and it created a, a debate that, that really f was f in favor of our conduct, at the end result, we did not perform. So we failed because we kind of, anyway. Yeah, but this was a clear message to the government, I think, uh, and to the conservative world. And it's, it's more than 20 years ago, but things haven't really changed to the better. Um, I'm curious, would you do such a thing again in Israel? I would, I would now, I le from what I learned, I would perform without changing instead of cancelling the performance. Mm. You would just... Do your art. But it's, you know, the truth is that it's a, it's a st we call it a storm in a glass of water. Do you have this expression? <laughs> you know, you look at it in, in the perspective, it's really, it, does, it didn't really send a message to the people that... But it did. Mm, it was really. art against conservatives, conservative ideas. Yeah, but nobody changed their mind. Mm -hmm. That's how we work. Talking about costumes, uh, one thing that strikes me uh, is that you hardly make any difference between feminine and masculine costumes or, or even um, uh, between the movements of the dancers. They're under, and yeah, whatever. They're both feminine and masculine. Um, and also in your work, tenderness occur between the same sexes. Talk well, the, the gender, the gender question for me in dance is not a question. It is obviously there is man and there is woman. You know, I'm not going to say that there is no difference, but I'm not dealing with the differences. For me, also, I'm not dealing with the difference between people so much. I'm dealing actually with what is similar, what we have in common, what we can share that we can learn from each other, how we are actually similar to each other so we don't talk about differences and segregations and races So, because we are a lot more similar than different. Even if I don't know you, I know that we are very similar. And I take it that, that we are different, I take it for granted that we are different and I respect it. So it's the same for movement and for men and women, and actually, if you talk about similarities, there are two men who are more different than me and another woman that can be more similar for other reasons than our sex. So, because I'm really concerned in, in where we are, what we can share, and what we can discover that is about our similarities, not sameness, similarity, that push us forward as human, as dancers, as artists, then of course it cancels the gender issue immediately. Just like the connotations of national connotation or geographic connotation. Yes, because if you see ethnic. the photographs from, not from a long distance, but really close, it's still hard to see who is a woman and who is a man, really. Uh, but tell us a bit well, more, actually, yeah? No, you can see very clearly who is men and who is women. That's something I don't try to erase. There is a difference, but I don't care about this difference when I create or when I, I, I just take it for granted. And it creates a narrative in my work. It creates a narrative because obviously we are men and we are women in a very clear, distinctive way. And I'm not trying to erase that. But it's not something I have. Because the difference is so obvious, then I don't need to deal with it. Yeah, yeah so you just don't stress it. Uh, but let's stay a bit more about your choice of costumes. Um, at what point do you get your vision and how do you work? But for me, it's perfectly obvious uh, that you're working like a fashion designer when you choose uh, skin dresses, suits, unisex. Who does... Are you the one to decide? Actually, 
it took me a long time, and it was always uh, frustrating because the, the custom issue come late to the process. I work with dancers who wear whatever they want in the studio, and then we start thinking, what are we going to wear on stage? Um, so, and that, not my talent. I can say what I don't like, but I don't know what it is that I will like. So you work with the so fashion luckily, designers? Yeah, yeah, I work with few talented. One of them is Rakefet, who I no longer work with her, but in the beginning, for many years, she really made huge difference to my work with her vision. And the last five years, or even more, I'm working with Eri Nakamura. Uh, she's also the mother of my child. <laughs> and we live together. Uh, but she's a great artist, and she has this amazing um, ability to transform um, my work uh, and dress the dancers with something that actually illuminate it and uh, give it another dimension and another narrative that I didn't write. Um, and that's a great talent and I feel very fortunate. She isn't doing the dress, the costume for minus 16? No, for no. minus 16 actually it's, you will see there, there are basically mm. just suits, suits and hats yeah, and underwear. Suits. So mm. there's not much to mm. design there. It's a concept but mm. not much design. Being an art historian, I can't help by trans but translate your work into art. Uh, there is repetition, disruption, disrupted narratives, lack of centrality. There is no like main dancer, everything. Lack of, um, uh, lack of narrative. There is no story really, um, and uh, and it's also lack of decor. For me, it's abstract art. It's like as if they paint in the air. I think. Uh, do you think, is there a certain quality in fragmented storytelling? So, I feel that uh, there's a lot of um, thinking about the space that we are, like if you can see, it's very particular. There was a lot of, there is a, you see, there's a lot of thought put it's not just the air. We are thinking about the space. Um, Three-dimensional painting. But also, because it's human body, it can never be abstract to begin with. So I never think of my work as abstract because I'm dealing with people. And it's not just their body. It's their fantasy. It's their pain. It's their anger. It's their huge range of emotional uh, expression and and the scope of sensations which you can turn volumes on your delicacy and explosive and speed and texture so my work I feel has a, a lot of stories but it's this it's the narrative of dance the narrative of dance if you think of the narrative of dance, like you think of a narrative of music you cannot say that music doesn't have a narrative but you can you don't write it, but it's in there. So the narrative of dance, for me, is something that is very meaningful to the research that I make. It's about how I organize it, about the tension between the elements, about uh, volume, speed. This, this is a narrative, because if I do this, I told you, you know, I move my hand from here to here in a certain speed. I had a certain I had to deal with gravity you know so there is there is a there is a story many stories but I call it the stories of dance uh, your pieces are put up again and again and again and again all over the world do you ever get tired of your old works if I get tired of my own work yeah your old yeah your pieces your different pieces the answer is actually, I get tired, but because I think maybe I was born tired, I don't know, <laughs> seriously. But I don't get tired so much of my work because I, it, the, if I look at my work, I always look at dancers. And I always look my work through the expression of the dancers. I can be frustrated, but if I 
like my work is always the like of the dancers. Is, is if I get moved by my work, is moved by the dancers. And so I don't think about my work, it's really the dancers. And the dancers can always give me fresh, uh, and all, always, always give me a reason to enjoy the moment. Um, I can get tired of maybe, you know, when a dancers, I have to tell a dancers again and again some correction and I don't see it happening. So I can get frustrated or bored with it. But as a, an overall, I actually get a lot more excited by meeting my work through the dancers than bored. So it's never like, oh no, not virus again. Well, I tell you what, I don't see many shows. I don't go to see the shows of my work. I see very few shows. I am with the dancers in the process. I'm with the dancers in the rehearsals, in the tech rehearsals, even maybe in the general rehearsal. But once the show starts, I hardly go. Wow. So maybe if I would go, I would get bored. <laughs> yeah. So, as a curiosity, the Minus 16, which is premiering uh, in a few weeks, uh, one of the scenes are actually the scene that w caused this scandal. Uh, it's uh, um iconic scene uh, with dancers performing to uh, traditional famous songs that is sung during Passover. It's like a it's a singing game. Uh, I sang it myself in, in Jewish school. Uh, have you started the rehearsals? I was there today. They have started weeks ago with an assistant that is here. They know the work. They show me around today and I enjoyed it. And we still have uh, with me, they have today and tomorrow. And then they will again remain with my assistant. No mirrors. No. No mirrors. No mirrors. No. We are not allowed. We really. My contract with every company that I come is that they have to cover the mirrors, and the, most of the time the dancers are very grateful for that. Yeah, I understand them. I mean, for myself. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, and and it will be you and uh, uh, two other. Choreographers, Mats Ek and Yuri Killian. Yuri Killian, exactly. But I read that it's going to be a kind of a collaboration between you and Mats Ek. Would you reveal what that is about? Because he's um, on, on the website, it says two different uh, uh, shows, but it, they will be somehow intertwined. Well, Mats is presenting a duet. Uh, and he asked me if it's okay that his duet will be woven into my work. So that's what we're doing actually tonight. We decide where it will happen. And then we need to work out the transitions in and out of the duet. Because my work will still continue after. Sounds amazing. Um, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that I can accommodate Matt's wishes. <laughs> Basically, that's that's my biggest satisfaction. Yeah, that's beautiful, um, so, yeah. Mr. Hunt. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I know that you need to hurry back to the opera for rehearsals. And thank you very much for your words on dance and about your beautiful words about uh, Gadi Dagon. And we send him all our love. I I hope you tell him. Thank you very much, Johan. Yeah. yeah. You know, one, one of the things that we really want is we want to help Gadi. And I think we can think how we can help him. Yeah, his photos, they're going to live forever. Thank you. Thank you, Ahad. Thank you. Thank you.